Hello there, and welcome back to Midlife Rises. I'm Cheryl. Yeah, we are back to this again. It's, I don't know, it's just like we're just flipping from summer to winter, summer to winter. It's been a little while. We have not had an up-to-date episode in a little bit. There's been a lot going on, but trust me when I tell you, we have you in thoughts. So we just got over what we call the Halloween season in the New York area. There are other states that, um, get involved with this as well. The Halloween holiday is a very interesting one because it's supposed to be linked with evil, but on the contrary, you pass by a house and you're seeing skeleton heads, witches, warlocks, gruesome monsters, etc. But on the other side of this, you have kids dressing up as their favorite character to collect candies. It's just that time where everyone get together and that you're just like spreading love. You know, as a child, it used to be my favorite time. I used to love that part of it, you know, just getting dressed up and going out and collecting candies. As an adult, I would dress up in the costumes I did from previous parades and go to costume parties and that used to be a serious rush. We used to compete. The first prize would be winning a trip to the Bahamas. I remember going as an Egyptian one time fully detailed and I lost to Freddy Krueger. For those who don't know, you know, who Freddy Krueger is, it's from that movie uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. I mean, this guy had a simple mask on, a sweater, some nails, and he won. I was pissed because it was a simple costume, but there wasn't much to it. And yet he won over myself and a whole bunch of others that came in with detailed stuff. But just the rush of it was fun. I'm talking about Halloween. I'm going to share with you in a minute where, you know, some people went into details on their home decoration. There was one in the Flatbush area that I did go by. I was supposed to go back and interview the young lady, but it didn't happen. I did get to talk to her. Apparently, it was a tradition. It is a tradition for her and her family. They've been doing it for years, and she owns the house now, so she's just following the family tradition. This is really going beyond. Look at this. This is too funny. I did see something on my side. I, I, you know, I looked, but I didn't think it was this much. Oh my gosh, this person is going like into full detail. Oh, this thing just stood up. Oh my gosh, what? This wasn't doing that before. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this must be something else in the night. Look at this. He also wasn't doing this. Yeah, this is a whole theatrical something going on here. Let's see if the babies will do anything. Is there anything going on? <laughs> So I guess nothing is happening here. Yeah, this is this. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah, this is. Oh my gosh. Oh. 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 Look at this. It's pretty nice. Let me come out of the car so I can give a full rundown on this thing. What is that? The skeleton of a dog. And over there also. Pretty big mansion. Let's see. This is some kind of bubble bee. Yeah, look at this. These people are going all into it, and I didn't even see this. It's not doing much like it did in that thing. 
I had, and this is like a giant skeleton. This is gross. I don't think I'd be able to deal with something like this at my house. It's like, this is too much. This is way too much. Look at this. Some people, oh, I didn't see these. Oh, this is really gross. But yeah, they're not really doing anything. But, um, yeah, and things hanging all over the house. I don't know. I don't know. But, uh, I'm doing a piece on Halloween. Because there has to be something to it. Because you've got love. Like, candies and stuff is being given to children. So, it's kind of weird but this stuff in the daytime it's like really detailed look at this she's holding a thing with spells this is too funny get around here in the night it's really pretty because it like glows the kids love it. This thing is like huge. I don't know where they got it. But yeah, these people get into full details for uh, the Halloween season. I believe that is that movie, Bruce Willis. <laughs> That's too funny. And she's walking the streets like that. <laughs> Today, I want to discuss the blessings of having faith and being able to feel love. I have pointed out in all of our outlets that, you know, I don't like to discuss religion, but it's very important to have something that you believe in. That is like super important because we have to have accountability for the things that we do. When we work our way to the midlife years, we have episodes, we have tests, and these tests are really experiences. And a lot of it is not, it's not positive. Some of our experiences are more serious than others. But I think it's important to understand the way we perceive it the way we handle it is going to be key. Like I've been expressing it like we have a private talk show, because we all do. None of us got to this stage without something. We have all had the experiences. But a lot of us, more than 50%, are not coping with it. We're not dealing with it at all. You know, we're turning the other cheek and we're using different outlets to get past it. Because this stuff, when it builds up, it's like a volcano. I mean, it's going to do damage. Then we turn around after ignoring the inner turmoil. And we start to bleed over others that didn't do the cut. That analogy, I heard it somewhere. I think it's this guy, um, forgot the doctor's name, he's a psychologist, but the way he expressed that is brilliant because that is exactly what takes place. We kind of romance things that have happened years ago and we want to be able to do it, negative feelings from the past and it's a problem. We have these private talk shows and we're normally starring in it. We all have it, but it's what we choose to do with the information. And I'm not going to be insensitive to traumas that people experienced in their childhood or adolescent years. It's not funny, but it is our responsibility to do our due diligence. I opened the show with the Halloween season because of, you know, all the gruesome stuff that takes place, see, the, the zombies and so on. But we also have the positive side, and that's how life is, you know, there's the negative and the positive. Where do you 
find your common ground. There's light and there's dark. There's sadness, there's happiness, you know, there's an opposite side to everything. This is so important because a lot of times the things that we go through, we're not doing the work. We're not trying to fix it, but we are actively looking for someone to pay for what we're dealing with. And that's not right. It's not fair. It is not right to ignore what's going on with you and constantly look around for someone to pay for it. Like you're seeing the outer part of me, but you don't know what's going on inside. And that's the problem. You can't just look at someone and say, oh my God, he's, he's handsome or she's pretty, because you don't know what kind of damage is going on on the inside. People are not doing the work. When someone says that you're not doing the work, it means that you are ignoring what's taking place with you. You are not looking to fix things. You are masking it, ignoring it, and feeding into it. Because when you run around doing things to others because of what you feel inside, that is not going to help you in any way. In fact, it's going to come back around and bite you. What goes around? It has to come around. The world is a circle. Come on. You've heard that. What goes around, it has to come back around. So it's best to do the work and fix whatever it is that's going on with you, whether it's therapy, you know, talking to others. I love talking about what's going on with me because I don't like to keep things in. It's very dangerous doing that. It's like poison to your system. Having faith and being able to feel love. That's the topic today. And I'm mixing it with the Halloween season because like I said, you know, you, you have the, the zombies and the witches, the warlocks, and you know, just evil, but then you've got candies and love. You, you have kids, anything that has to do with children is pureness, innocence. God is love. And if you're able to feel that, then you will have that light. You'll be able to push away the darkness of anger and bitterness, hate, you know, envy, all of these negative, dark things will not be part of your life. When you are holding on to things that happen and you're not trying to resolve it, but you're also like looking to bring people into that to hurt others because of what you've been through or what you're feeling how will that be fixing things this is where the faith comes in faith is believing in something that you're not seeing you can try to work with whatever is happening but when you see it's out of your hands, you're supposed to understand that you've got to, you know, you've got to surrender it. You've got to just leave it to the divine, to God, to the universe, however you want to define it. But you have to understand that things are not fully in your control. And I think once we have that mentality, that disposition will be just fine. But that's not what's going on here. You know, people have powers. They have powers in the sense where it's a boss, it's the stronger one in the relationship, and if that person is hurting or broken, they are looking to take that out on the person that is beneath them. They are going to use that power, and it won't be in the positive. And that's sad. I can talk comfortably about this stuff because two years ago I lost my mom and she meant everything to me. That was my foundation. The year before that, my dad left and it, it's, it's an adjustment, you know, and I'm still working with it, but when I go out to work or to interact with other people, they don't know what I'm dealing with. I'm always smiling, I am conversing, and a lot of times it gets me in trouble because 
people are looking and they're wondering well, why is she so happy but they don't know what I'm dealing with because I have it at the side I know what I have to do I know what my responsibility is and I take care of it but then when I get back to what's taking place I deal with it or I just leave it alone and I you know I just surrender it but I'm not consumed by anything because of the faith my beliefs and I stay pleasant because I'm always working to be you know in a happy mode I'm a happy person and I think it's like that because over the years I have learned how to face my issues how to deal with my inner battles I don't have any addictions I have preferences I don't have any obsessions that's doing the work that is what we call doing the work but if you don't have anything you believe in and you don't like feel like you have to care about the way you treat someone or treat others in stages if they're a doctor they'll get more respect as opposed to someone who you know is lower status that's not the way it's supposed to go like I will deal with an attorney almost the same way I will treat someone that lives on the streets and that should be the way it is because it's still a human being you know we've got to have that humility we've got to have the morals and this is where the love and the faith is important because when you have those things all the other principles just fall into place it just does it automatically because you're more respectful you are more conscious you're aware and it just it it's a different ball game with the other problem too is we we spend a lot of time in the past we're not in the present moment I would say again the past is gone the future is not here yet all you've got in your hands is the present it's actually a gift that's why it's called a present but we don't live here a lot of us you know we're we're back there somewhere and um, from my psychology background I can tell you that depending on what took place whether it's trauma in our childhood or adolescent years that can do a lot of damage if it's not fixed a lot when I was a child I used to look at an adult and I just knew for a fact that that person will know what to do they would be able to take care of things they would do the right thing and that's not necessarily so now that I'm an adult I realize that that's not what happens if that person did not do the work and they've had some kind of trauma in the childhood or adolescent years on their way up to midlife it can actually stunt their growth and I'm telling you what I know for example if someone gets hurt whatever kind of damage or trauma they had uh, from a parent or a sibling and that's not corrected properly that person can actually advance in age and not grow so you can have a 50 60 year old person that has the mentality of a 14 or 15 year old because they did not correct what happened at that time so they did not grow from that period of trauma as simple as I'm saying it it has it does take place more often than we think because they did not address what took place at that time the growth was stunted it, it's it ceased at that age and then they they're just like living life growing older and not growing we have to address our issues we've got to be able to find that balance when we do that we'll have the 
humility, we'll have the peace of mind, we'll have that fruit of the Spirit, so to speak. And that is love, joy, patience, you know, and all the other stuff. Look it up. It's really sad because the anger, the bitterness, all of these negative emotions, and he started Midlife Rises. And the whole idea was to just have fun, you know, talk about fashion and being in middle age and keeping yourself up. But I found myself talking about what I've learned in my psychology studies, you know, things like emotional intelligence. That is super important. In my opinion, we should be taught that like the ABC because it is very needed as we grow into our midlife years. You know, having aging parents, losing your parents, battling with adult children. We have to be able to cope with these things. And if we're not mature enough, it can be difficult. I'm still working with losing my parents. I'm functioning, but I'm still coping with that. I'm doing the work. And I'm also on a rock. That was my foundation, and it was shattered. My mother was everything to me, and my dad, I wasn't raised with him, but we were close. It's the way I lost both of them, it was interesting. But I'm dealing with it because that is what I do. And I don't, I'm not looking for any um, outlets. I have my little vices here and there, but there are no obsessions and there are no addictions because I'm guided by that light. I have that fruit of the spirit. I've worked to have that. I don't ignore anything. We've got to be able to not only have the self-awareness, but to be um, you know, aware of our environment because our environment is everything. That's what makes us up, actually. Having your, your intuitions, your perception, that's all you've got to guide you. And if you are not around the right environment, mm -hmm. you can question that. This is why it's also good to be able to travel and just be able to talk to other people. So you get different opinions and you're able to make better decisions when you're not in your environment you can be able to look in to your situation be able to look in on what you need to do it's it's just it's good to have choices we say God is love and if you're not able to feel that then what's going on there you know Christianity You'll have some people that say, I'm a Christian. What exactly is that? In my opinion, a Christian is someone who believes in Jesus Christ and that he died for our sins. I go to church and I always think to myself, what is this person like outside of this place? Because that's key. What are you doing when no one is looking? A lot of us do not believe that we will be held accountable for the wrong that we do. And I'm here to tell you that is not so. Everything that you do, someone sees it. You've got to be careful. I said it earlier. A lot of us are very superficial. Things are more important than a human being or we believe that we should show more respect to someone of status than we do to someone who lives on the streets it's still a human being and you don't know what or who this person is that's why it's important to watch how you treat everyone and not be selective You've got to be respectful. And I think the guideline should be you treat someone how you want to be treated. And that's 
that's fair, that's simple, right? Try to work to fix things on the internal. When that's corrected, you'll have your peace, you'll have your balance, and you'll be able to, you know, to enjoy life a little better. I like thriving for my happiness. Internally, there are no scars. I'm just steady, and I've been through a lot. So there is no excuse. You have to do the work. And looking to take it out on someone or punish someone for what you're going through is a very dangerous thing to do because it's not going to get you anywhere. In fact, it's going to cause more problems because you are going to pay for the wrong that you do to someone that did nothing to you. I mean, I'm not making this stuff up. That's the way it works. You've got to be accountable for the wrong that you do. We've got to have more um, humility and sensitivity. We've got to have that. The main thing is to try for your peace of mind, to have your health, and to just keep your balance. And the way you do that is by, like I said, having humility and being respectful to others doing the right thing when you have that chance, as well as what's going on on the internal. Work to correct it head on and not look to take it out on someone that didn't have anything to do with what is going on. That's the best thing to do because the self talks, the enemy is there willing to sway you away, to have you bite that forbidden fruit like he did Adam but guess what he's not gonna be anywhere around when you get out in the wilderness when you are being dealt with he's not going to help you he's not you have to understand where the rock is what the true vine of happiness is work towards the light stay away from the darkness don't entertain it and work to get that fruit of the Spirit. And the way you get it is by being able to feel love and having that faith. Okay? We come on every first and third Thursday of the month. Thanks for joining me, and I hope to see you on our next episode. Happy holidays, and we will see you next time. You take care now. Bye.